All right, we're going to figure out what kind of train wreck this is going to be. Who <laughs> doggy. Who doggy is right. We're here. It's Who a, done it? About that time. Usually, about this time on a Thursday. What's it time for? Warhammer. Oh, there Warhammer. you go. We're about to get Warhammered. Uh, <laughs> Warhammered. It's past Warhammered. tense. Yeah. I'm Jazz. That's Beer Jim. And that's Caitlin. Hello. And uh, we have this little podcast called Warhammered, where we talk about uh, nerd lore at a... Wave top level. And I'm talking like... <laughs> Way up there. We, like, you can see the wave, not even touch it. Like, it's a... <laughs> it's the top it, <laughs> It is just, it's just like it. it's you pat the wave on the head yeah. as it goes the by. It's the sea spray that comes off. That's how high it yeah, is. It's, it's just, it, it's more like you're like in an oceanside town. Right. But not close enough to the ocean to you see smell it. You can hear and it. You see and it's humid. Yeah. But that's. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That's about <laughs> it. Yeah, you can get that salt smell. Yeah. And that's it. Have that's we had anyone that's like, well, actually, you guys are wrong. And we have fans. In Don't person, we, have fans? we in, do have fans. In person, people have told me that yeah. things we've said on the show are wrong, and I'm like, oh, no, no, go make your own show. I don't get a fuck. Wave top level. Uh, we do have some fans. Apparently, we have a friend in Australia. What? Ooh. Yeah, and uh, apparently, there's several people in Australia that listen to us now. Good day, uh, mate. <laughs> but uh, they went on and made a comment that was like, "I absolutely love jazz, especially his explanation of what he's called Aussie or the AFL, or what he refers to as Aussie rules rugby." Yeah, but it's I guess Aussie it's the, football. I guess it's the Australian Football League. Yeah, yeah. So it's not rugby. And I'm like, then why do you play with a rugby ball? And you don't yeah. wear pads. Yeah. And you don't, it, it's it, rugby. It looks an awful lot like fucking rugby. Yeah, it looks exactly like rugby. Uh, but whatever, I don't give a fuck what you call it. I think it's awesome as shit. It's like yeah. one of the best games to watch. Yeah, my friend from uh, Colorado, she was in town this weekend. And she was like, oh, yeah, listen to your podcast. I was like, what? <laughs> why? why? <laughs> and she was just like, I don't know, just because you're on it. And, Want to support, and I was like, appreciate it. Yeah, so. we've had some other people though, uh, the the ones that have stopped by the store mm-hmm. and and told us that uh, been listening religiously at least since, since like February, February, which I'm like, we started I think in January. Yeah, the show's Jesus. not that old, so uh, yeah, so uh, it's it's good to know that it, there's at least it, that right there. That's at least three people I know of that listen <laughs> to the show. So we made it. We're getting somewhere. Oh, we made and then it. Uh, a couple of our regulars, like Chris, listens. Yeah, but they're I think they have to. Mm-hmm. Do they? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because they play here. Yeah, yeah. Like they're required to. Because I'm gonna ask him. Be like, hey, you listen to the show? You gonna show me some love? That's are you, fair. Are you doing your, are yeah, you doing should, your part? We should make a we should make a Reddit channel about us. <laughs> uh, yeah. Only if we do an AMA. Oh, ask done. me anything. Done. Yeah. Only if we do an AMA. Mm-hmm. I think you'd be fun. All we're right. gonna we're Pony gonna make, we're gonna, gonna make Pony Boy moderate it. I don't know yeah. how to get that stuff set up. We'll do an so, AMA while we're playing Warhammer together. We'll be playing a game. Yeah, yeah and we'll just do an ask a question. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, like yeah, we're yeah, yeah, we're just we can do it from the studio. We'll just we'll flip the cameras around and do yeah. it on the um the let's play side like of the studio. It. Let's do it. Uh, because we have a you you guys haven't ever seen it or we've never talked about it, but the other side of the studio is I actually use it a lot. is a is a really let's play studio yeah. so I that we can actually we do can do that. Uh, actually playing hammered Warhammer would be yeah, just getting. So what we need to do is we need to pick like a Sunday. Yeah. And we show up here and we start at like 10. Okay. I'm and in. then we go live at like 1. Right. And so we're drinking for three hours before. Before we ever even like deploy. Yeah. It, like, I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> just I'm down. <laughs> Pre-game before. Yeah. Well, what time? we need to do is get you to have finish your uh, your chaos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we could have a three-way Ooh. game. Wow. Yeah. That came <laughs> out wrong. That's the kind of friends we are on this show. <laughs> is, uh, as soon as I said Hi, it, Sam. I stopped. And it Love was you. Down. Does your wife listen to the show? Mm-mm. Didn't Sam tell you that you were super hot now that you ride a motorcycle? Yeah, yeah. so we pulled we're up to birthday about party. Sam. Yeah. And she saw me pull up my bike, and she was like, oh, my God, you're like 10 times hotter now. <laughs> and then just like walked away, and I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. That's, that's, my, that's my wife. Yep. She'd be like, yeah. You just up the hotness level. And good it was for like you. all yeah. breathy like that. She was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> fucking You're love like Sam. Seven times That's hotter. Fucking, I funny. love Sam. Sam's great. Um, yeah. Quick happy birthday to Ben. He doesn't listen to the show, but that's yeah. my son. It's but he's rock star mode. I, we got to meet the twins. Yeah. 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 And that, the is, ben. They are, that is illegal cuteness right there. Holy shit. Oh, Charlie shizer. just ran up and just like picked yeah. me up. Yep. There she it ran is. right at me. And then I picked her up and walked to the room, and she was like, Jazz is here. And I was like, you have never seen me before in your life. Yeah. Jazz is here. Look at this beard. <laughs> I, was like, you, I was like, you have no idea who I am. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but we made Ben's day by letting him sit on the motorcycle. Yeah, he enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. He looked good. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. He get him started young. Yeah. Just like the church. 
Just church or motorcycle. <laughs> There's two directions in life. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Um, what are we talking about? Well, uh, so we do wave top level stuff, and I do have a, a, a specifically today a Warhammer thing I want to talk about. But before we do that, Ooh, oh, hold on. Yep. Before we do that, dead space. There's a <laughs> a little section on this show that uh, truth bombs Bump getting bomb. dropped on you. Uh oh. It's all, all facts all the time. From the uh, the biggest facts possible. From the the sexiest sultan of swag I have ever met in my life. The leader of Jim's Beer Corner. Hey. Beer Jim. Yeah, you guys are getting me straight off the canning line right now too. You, 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 I, I got I got I got yeah. I got beer musk on me all over the place. Yeah. You smell like it. Oh, good. That's awesome. But yeah, it was a good canning day. Yeah. Did like 200 cases. You know what I like about Jim is always smells like beer and always has good head. Mm-hmm. Boom. <laughs> That's Jim's Beer Corner. Thank you, everybody. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> and to our next topic. Uh, so we actually, today's going to be a little different. Okay. A little different. Yeah. Um, because we do not have, we are we are drinking beer, uh, which is a requirement on the show, is mm-hmm. to be drinking something. But yeah. um, we don't have a new beer we're going to discuss today. We, I, I mean, I guess we could talk about what we are drinking. Right, right. Uh, but we've talked about all of them. So I'm drinking um, uh, your Belgian double. Great. Just um, got another 70 cases going out. So uh, I'm drinking your Belgian double because we have it on draft here at uh, our place. Yeah. Uh, you're drinking, looks like HTO. Yep. Hometown lager. And then. Hometown lager. Yeah. So. You're not, you're not um, doing the, you're saving the Hello Gorgeous for a little bit later. It's, it's, take. War- it's, a, it's warm. Is uh, it warm a little bit? Well, well, not the cans. Warm. The cans are for the house. Yeah. That's what I meant. Like, I oh, that, yeah, the, yeah. We just cans put Hello house. Gorgeous on tap. So it, the mm. keg hasn't come down to. Mm-hmm. Temp but yeah, I guess yet, we so. could have shown off the new label. Yeah. It's in the fridge on the other side. It's, it's like, fine. It's whatever. Oh, there's one. Oh. Oh. He's going to bring it up. Look at the effort. Look at him. Look at him go. Don't Look stick it in front of the camera. You're going to fuck up my focus. It's, 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 it's orange. There's a witch on it. It's a nice label, though. There you go. It's orange. It has a witch. It's awesome. It's a, it's a The the new can looks great. It's a great beer inside. Yeah. Tap room only. Um, yeah. So that is not available in HEB or anything. You have to come to the tap room to buy that. To get it canned. To get it canned. There's, there's, if you want it in the there's can. There's bars out there that do have it. If you want it in the can, oh. you got to come to the tap room. Yeah. First come, first serve. Um, I tapped that. <laughs> we're just going to do a lot of innuendos today? Is that that, right? that's, no, that's where we're at. Yeah, cool. Let's do it. Um, well, speaking of innuendos, I would like to talk about things that aren't supposed to go together. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so uh, it, 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 Jim and I are actually really good friends outside the show. Like, we don't just do this because we have businesses that, mm. that work together. We yeah. are legitimately friends, and we talk, well... Powerful acquaintances. Powerful. No, we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> we're friends. He's my, he's my BFF. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, and so we we talk quite a bit. Yeah. We, right. we bounce questions off each other. We're both small business owners, so we bitch at each other about business. What it, how it sucks to be a small business owner. Yeah. Um, but we had a discussion the other day about uh, craft beer mm-hmm. and these breweries that do these. Hold on. I, I saved it because you. You described a beer that was fucking hilarious to me, oh. and so I kept it. Oh, are we talking about uh, Martin House? Well, well, no, we don't. We don't have to fucking just throw him under the bus. Oh, God damn, Jim. No, I'm Martin House. You don't give a fuck. Shit. Yeah, I don't give a shit. But anyways, we were talking about uh, fucked up beer flavors and these beer, these breweries that are putting out this shit that's all just gimmicky. And I like how he described it as all these fucking breweries and their everything is toaster strudel with lemonade stouts. <laughs> 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 and so I, I do I I do think we should talk about this. Okay, yeah. Um because let's face it, on this show, our preferences, the way we like to drink beer mm-hmm. and stuff like that, we're never gonna bring any of these No. Uh like when, not. when Ranger did that voodoo donut maple bacon yeah, ale yeah, show. We're never yeah. gonna drink that on this show. Yeah. But um, if but also I just wanna say, like, if that is your jam, God bless you. And go drink craft beer, and, drink local. And seek help. And seek help. Um yeah, I don't have to agree with you to tell you that you're wrong. Mm-hmm. It, like, it, it, like it's yeah, right. No, it's it, he's right. If that's your thing, then at least don't. At least go find the local brewery that's doing all that wild shit. Yeah, yeah. and drink local. Don't go buy the big national chain multi million dollar collaboration deal yeah. shit. Go 
go drink the weird shit local so that one, you don't have to buy a six pack of it. So you can have it and go like, well, that was awful. Now yeah. I have all this extra beer. Um, but two, support a local brewery that decided to do something stupid. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think I would like to talk about this sure. and about, yeah. I don't know, the last 10 years, this phenomenon of how much shit can we put in beer that shouldn't be in beer? Right, and that really, it really got to a head, uh, I would say, maybe like two, three years ago. Basically, when I was first starting Second Pitch, um, that's when everything felt like was um, a a pastry stout. Because technically, the term is called a pastry stout, is the, is the new term. And that is actually now, it's going to be probably with the next BJCP update, which is probably the next year or so. Will be an actual recognized BJCP style, Can which we, is a pastry what, style. What is that? Uh, the idea of pastry stout no, is that BJCP. Oh, BJCP is the Beer Judge Certification Program. Okay, that's, um, that's what that. I have a feeling that was one of those ones where like it was one of those teaching moments where you were you're oh, so deep in it that it just rolled out yeah, for you, yeah. and everybody else was like, "I have no, no fucking yeah, thank idea you. what yeah. that is." So BJCP is the Beer Judge Certification Program. It's a wonderful program that basically teaches and trains people to be beer judges because it's a very very important thing to be a beer judge um, because then I can't win all of the awards that I do. Um, without judges to tell me I'm awesome, which I love it when people do that. <laughs> um, so it's actually his only kink. It's my only kink. I'm just I'm a middle child, and I need that constant affirmation yeah. in my life. I which don't is get why it. Sam is belovedly referred to as a dummy mommy. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, <'Cause what? laughs> she's just she's just you're such a good boy, Jim. <laughs> it, <laughs> that is not what she does. <laughs> that is not what she does. <laughs> That is not true. No, but... Um, it so is in my headcanon. Yeah, that's in your headcanon, yeah. that's what it is? That's yeah, 100%. Behind okay, closed good. doors, that's yeah, what it is. Yeah, as soon as that door closes, it just turns into... Yeah, it's just... Oh, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? <laughs> who's a good boy? If we could not you talk about this. You go over there this. and make mommy's bed. No, that's not what's <laughs> happening. That's not what's happening. The, the answer is like the behind doors goes to Samantha. It's like, how hard is it to put your shit in a hamper? <laughs> how Actually, hard is it? His hamper's there. I know both of y'all's schedule, and I know all of your kids. And as soon as the door closes, it's typically like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're as busy as we are. Yeah, like, no, we're, yeah. yeah, it's insane. But uh, anyway, Beer Judge, now that we can get away from that, Beer Judge Certification Program <laughs> is a really, really, really hard program to do. And you have to know a lot about beer. You got to know a lot about beer styles. And what they did was that they really codified what beer styles were. So you'll get, if you look it up, BJCP.com, there is, you can download the guidelines for free and it will say like, this is what an IPA is. And it'll do a little blurb about history, what you should taste, different ingredients. Hmm. Well, so And um, it gives you a range of uh, SRM, which is color, uh, IBUs, which is the... Um, how, how uh, international bitters unit? Yeah, how, how bitter something is, and then also alcohol. That's you cool. Know, how alcohol it is, so uh, alcoholic it is. So that's like you can, if a home brewer wants, or even a professional brewer wants to submit into a category, you know what you're going to get judged on. So it codifies these beers to make them. You can basically compete against other people. So you at know, the last the real at the work. last World Beer Cup, where Second Pitch Beer Company actually won back to back silver medals for its California Common style. Um, plug. <laughs> oh, see how I saw it. Yeah, so no, at the, it was, <laughs> at the it last was, World Beer Cup, yeah, really, we really. watched a a good chunk of it. Yeah, here. Yeah, because we knew what categories, and we have another one coming up on Saturday. Um, GABF oh. Great American Beer Festival, the, the right. second most important one. Uh, because you submitted S five beers, several beers, six to that beers in that, and I think you were in three categories at the Beer Cup, right? No, we were in like five as well. Oh, was it five? Yeah, but we watched a good chunk of it mm -hmm. here. Um. But I, I'm a, so all of those categories. That's what you're talking about. Yep. So they could have. And yep. how many categories were it's like there? 189. Or something yeah, it's. Like I that. mean, it was it was just shy of like 200 yeah. different categories Jeez. of beer. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's kind of cool because it you people like to do the whole like, oh well, this one's a lot like, and then insert major label here. Yeah, and it's like, it, well, sure, I yeah. guess on like color and yeah. maybe kind of. But the it's like with every feel, but they're not the same. Like your California common is not a Bach. Yes. And or not a light beer. Like, you know, so But if I poured, say, a Shiner Bach in a glass mm -hmm. and then put hometown lager in a glass and just set them on a counter next to each other, yeah. color wise, yeah. you're actually, getting we, close. We're we're actually in the same category. I compete with Shiner Bach. That's the same category. On the HDL? Yeah. Ooh. Because it's originally it's though it's a home it's a California common, not enough people make a California common. 
And so it gets filtered into a larger category called American Amber Locker. Oh. And he still beat him. He still beat him. Came at you. What I actually, years, one of the days. classiest things I ever saw is the guy that actually, that, that did beat you in your category. Mm-hmm. You're like, I can't argue that's a really good fucking beer. <laughs> it like, I don't know. It's like, like, just like, yeah. Yeah, no, it was like, it was like that's, that's, that's how you win with class. Yeah. It also helps when you're, you know, silver in the world. Is, yeah. All right, fine. You can have the, <laughs> I still want that gold. Yeah, no, that gold. not bad. But okay, so anyway, so BJCP, back to these weird ass beers. So these weird ass beers are hard to uh, figure out, to judge against, and to what they actually are. So pastry stouts is the kind of broad term for these beers, which they are heavily adjunct stouts. Mm-hmm. Which adjuncts mean you know anything that is not uh, hops, water, malt, or uh, yeast. Yep. So you have these uh, heavily modified stouts, and they put a lot of different stuff in there. We're talking about coconut, chocolate. Um, different spices. They also, some people have used donuts in the mash to actually get that flavor. You know, we've done, people have done vanilla bean. Cake. Cake. Yeah, Pies. that kind of stuff. And it really got into a point where people were, um, mm. about two, about three years ago, people were, three to four years ago, people were just throwing a lot of shit at the wall. Yeah. And seeing what stuck. And um, some of it was really, really, really good. And some of it was really, really, really bad. Um, and it's kind of just a depending on what is, what your style, what your preference is. And so what I was saying is that BJCP is probably going to be putting the pastry stout as, as a, a category. as a, as its own recognizable category. But with the width of weirdness that's in that category. Right. How it's do you, hard. It's hard. And that's how the do you codify problem. that? Yeah, you can't, you don't. So, you know, you have pastry stouts that do something like, okay, it, it is something simple. And they do a pastry stout, and it's just like, oh no, we have a lot of just strudel flavor that's in here. We yeah. used, we used, yeah, we used like uh, a, we did a streusel kind of thing, and it, it added in this sweetness, and so we yeah, just have this sweeter exactly. stout. But by the book, that's a pastry stout. Yeah, by the book. So what I was but then is, somebody yeah. does like you said, and they're like, oh no, it's a Pillsbury toaster strudel cream lemon, yeah, whatever stout, and it's like, how are you? How are these two facing off? Like, well, I, I, the, the greatest way that um, people have talked about it, and I'm going to really quote a lot on Paige, who is my QC person, who mm-hmm. is uh, Paige Martin, fantastic, wonderful palate, great employee. She's she's like the rain man of beer. Yeah, she's really, really, really good. It's um, it kind of insane. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, but she has she's we did a uh, uh, we do our monthly classes, you know, and she did one for beer styles, and she actually brought in pastry styles. And she said the number one thing that you want to do is you want to look at it as the base style. Did they make a good oh. stout? Oh. So then you look at that, and you look at, okay, yes. was Or this are they hiding shitty beer exactly. behind this hyped yes, flavor? behind this hyped flavor. And so the first thing you want to do when you're judging this style is drink it and be like, yes, it is a well-fermented stout. It has no off flavors. You can tell like just by beer judges if you... If you mess up on a st- uh, fermentation, you get weird off flavors. So none of those are there. Properly made stout. Cool. Now, do the flavors they add accent or hit the mark that they are selling? Hmm. And that's what the next step of that judgment is. So you look at it, be like, you know, it's supposed to be... Sorry, my thing's all going crazy. Um, so you look at it and be like, okay, this is supposed to be a uh, cinnamon toast crunch stout. Mm-hmm. Let's go with that. You know, is there cinnamon? Is there that sugar? Is there a little bit of that, you know, graham cracker honey sweetness in there as well? Yeah. If they do, then it's like, great job. You did a made a great beer. So really, you have to do two separate things to make a good hmm. pastry stout. One is make a good beer. And then two is hit the mark that you are selling. Yeah. And that you're telling people you're trying to hit. If you don't do either of those, then it's not a good beer. Then it's not going to score well. So that's the way, that's the way they've kind of gone to... Um, judging these beers because yeah there are a lot of crazy ones like there's you know it's pills. nuts yeah it's nuts but you have to look at it objectively and see what they did so in your opinion mm-hmm. and, and again this is we are talking about an opinion here he's not saying you know <laughs> nope all these people are fucked this is just in your opinion right the way you run your brewery your goal with your beer and yes. you told me yeah. a lot about your philosophy of right. why right, you right, went right. into it and stuff like that where's too far like what is what what is okay you you're not brewing anymore this is this is this is me just Jim Hansen beer, beer this drinker this is just you are well before you had second pitch like you worked in the industry and stuff yeah, like that but you time. chased yeah. it as a passion this yeah. was a so you as somebody that was 
it was a passion, it was a hobby, it was a whatever. Fuck it. Let's let's just do it. As the the craft beer hipster mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where was where's the where's the line where it's just like you're not even this isn't beer anymore. <laughs> like this is just this is just hype marketing. This is just I'm like I think that's news, a lot of it too. Some newsletter is now going to tell everybody that we made this weird ass beer I like think blah, I, blah, it's, blah, it's, blah, it's blah. really it like personally I think it goes down to intent of the brewer and of the brewery. Um, if the intent of the brewery is to make something new and creative and to show off a style or to create something new, then I'm 100% for it. Mm-hmm. You know, if it is, if, if it's pure of heart, you know, for lack of a better word of like, you know, and actually doing that. But then you have some breweries, you know, I won't name names, but there are, they're out there who basically have a bunch of st- like base beers and they just like, okay, we have a stout. Now we're just going to add, okay, in this section, we're going to put the, we made 30 barrels of this stout. We're going to put in 10 barrels of this. We're going to just add uh, chocolate and peanut butter and fig newtons. Cool. Next. And then in this one, we're going to do this, this, and this, just so they can just get the name out there as fast as they humanly sure. can. That's where it becomes less of a passion and of a craft and more of a marketing gimmick. And that's, I've always had a very, very hard time for in my. Like, see, I agree I, with you because I, I, there's, are you familiar with Dewclaw? No. Okay, so Duke Claw Brewing was in the uh, Pacific North East, or mm-hmm. not Pacific, uh, uh, the, the Mid Atlantic area. Okay, uh, I'm not Pacific. It, it, so, so, so other side. Other side. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. So you know the Pacific's California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I got you. Where's the Atlantic? Yeah, I'm gonna go back talking about your bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you were saying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the Mid Atlantic. Um, Northern Mid Atlantic, uh, and then so they started in Maryland, yeah. and then they kind of got down to distribution like North Carolina and stuff cool, like cool. that. Um, I believe they've now gone under. It was one of those situations where they got to a certain size, and it was either somebody either did a step in and bring them a fuck ton of cash, yeah, or you, or they had to pull all the way back, but they had tried to grow to handle that. Right. If they pulled back, then it was just going to be the death knell, and that was it. And I think yeah. they've now closed down. Um, I was a big fan of Dewclaw because the bulk of their beers were, as you said, they were pure of heart beers. It was like, mm-hmm. hey, we did the style. It's our style. It's our version of the style. But right. It was a lot of your methodology of like, we really like this style beer. We just tweaked it to be closer to what we would want this style to be. Right. right. And they did it. But they did have one called Sweet Baby Jesus. Okay. And Sweet Baby Jesus was like drinking a Reese's peanut butter cup. Uh-huh. Great. Like it was. Yeah. Phenomenal. And it was, it was a stout that had chocolate and peanut butter. Great. And all that in it. But the other stuff they did, like, um, uh, uh, they had a blonde that was just absolutely, it was, it was just a straight blonde. It was super easy to drink, right, all right. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Their other styles were very traditional. But then in there, they had Sweet Baby Jesus. And they had no other stout. It was just, it was just that. Sweet like Baby they, Jesus, yeah. they specifically went to go make mm-hmm. that beer. And it was awesome. Um, but then you have these other ones that come out and it's like, well, this is our peanut butter and jelly lager. And it's like, what? Yeah. What who asked for this? It, yeah. Like, and it's, and I think, I think it's, I think also hmm. the pickle beer phenomenon that had kicked a, a lot of this off. Yeah. You know, pickle beer was a big thing. Um, you know, there so was, I blame, I blame voodoo donut personally. Yeah. Voodoo donut did a lot of this, that, that voodoo donut, maple, maple bacon Bullshit. donut beer shit that happened that everybody was like yeah went ape shit for and it would went nationwide and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Rogue did it. Rogue made that beer. Mm-hmm. It was trash, by the way, and yeah. I don't give a fuck it's who gross. you are. Come at me. I fucking I drank I that shit. I don't even know if Rogue's still around. It was terrible. I don't think so. Uh it was so bad. Really? I mean it was awful. But man, they duped people out of millions of dollars because everybody's mm-hmm. like, oh, I gotta buy this. Yeah. And they'd go and they buy it. Because it's something sit, new. You never and then heard you, of it. And, and then you drank it and went, oh, Jesus. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. But then I think all of these breweries saw how everybody just lost their goddamn mind over this donut exactly. thing that was, it's not good. First off, a maple bacon donut doesn't really turn me on. And then you're going to slam that into a beer. And it's like, yeah. You know, this is just going to taste like the donut and the bacon went bad. Yeah, and bacon it, beers, like there's been bacon beers around. And, and they're can, not good. They're not good. Um, some people have tried to make them, but. I'm not going to lie, maple in a beer? Yeah. I'd, I can get behind that. Oh, yeah, no, I, we've, we've used maple syrup before. Yeah. On uh, a couple of our casks. 
we do. Mm-hmm. So we do um, one off cast. So maple, we've done that. totally get it. Cool. Totally understand. Yeah. Um, there's certain add-ins and stuff that people are going to throw that are non-traditional beer ingredients. Mm-hmm. Totally see it. Um, especially yeah. given certain times of the year and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm mean, like, we, we look at our, our pumpkin beer, the Hello Gorgeous that we just put out. Um, that could be considered a pastry, mm-hmm. an adjunct beer. I mean, like, it's, it's interesting with the pumpkin thing because it, it's not new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's been it's around not, forever. And it's not traditional either, though. Like, it's, it's pretty traditional because, you know, using, there's been a, there were, at the beginning of brewing, like, we're talking like 1800s, like when brewing, you fermented was, what you had. You fermented what you had. Yeah. And, Americans fermented with pumpkin. Well, we had it. Because we had it. And, and it, it doesn't take readily, much to grow them, to be honest with you. It doesn't take much you. to grow them, and it was <laughs> readily available, and you grain was expensive, especially towards the end of winter. Yep. Or towards the or towards the toward fall, beginning of winter. Yeah, so I guess— And in, you can you were like, hey, we could either bake bread I or guess make what I mean beer, by, and you're just like, By traditional, it. I guess I mean, like, marketed? Mm-hmm. Like you, but yeah. now— like it's this time of year where I can go into a grocery store or a, a liquor store or a Total Wine or whatever, and I am not lacking on options for no. pumpkin beer. No. Like it is everywhere, uh, everywhere. And even fifteen years ago, it wasn't. You had like Pumpkin. Yeah, Elysian had a great one. Um, was a great one. There was stuff like that, and so Saint Arnold does a great pumpkin. But pumpkin now there's eater. there's so many that it's just kind of like nope, just that time of year. Like just that time of year. Starbucks so Starbucks gives us pumpkin spice. Beer gives us pumpkin beer. And we are. And so, yeah. It's fall. Bring so, out a flannel. So, by the way, all you dudes out there that want to make fun of the basic white bitches for going to get in their pumpkin spice, but you've got that fucking sixer of pumpkin in your fucking fridge. Yeah, that's you. That's your. That's so it's it's the white guy. That's uh, the that's the basic white guy. Yeah. Fall drink. Exactly. Everywhere, every year when I know that pumpkin flavors are back, just everything is right in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is that what you uh, Everything is back. You know the weather's about to cool down. Yeah, everything's in alignment. To, it's not going to be, be 100 okay. and fuck. Yeah. No, I'm I'm right there with you. It's like good times are Oh, you're wearing your Uggs and everything? I'm wearing my Uggs. I'm manifesting <laughs> cold weather. Good it's for you. Still Flannel and Uggs outside. Yeah. You know what? these like Uggs it. are so comfortable though. No, I'm in. I'm 100% in. I'm going to flannel in here because our store, we don't control the air conditioner in our store. It's my so nice my store right is now. like 65 oh degrees. So I'm, having gonna, the back, the I'm back, in flannel uh, to survive. The, the brewery, the back panel open of the brewery all day. It's on 95 degrees. We're you know what's wild is our summer was just so hot, though, that now it's like it's yeah. like 95 and everybody's outside going like, it's gorgeous. It's, so it's, nice. it's amazing out here. It's a great day. It's like, well, it dropped by 20 degrees. So, yeah, yeah it's so nice. It is fucking nice. I can wear a light jacket. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, anyway, that's what I think um, with those stout. Um, I think I think there's a, there's a big difference between adjunct beers and pastry beers, and then there's hype beers. Yeah, and I don't just and mean I, the pastry I do not stuff. Like I just hype beers. I wanted to get your opinion on this whole like, yeah. Hey, we put these seventeen other flavors in this, and none of them have anything to do with beer. Yeah, yeah. Here's our fucking sardine pilsner. Can and we? It's like, can we go around the fuck? horn and like think of flavors and be like, this is the beer I'm going to try to bring to market, and just think of the most ridiculous things. Oh yeah, what would you do? You start it off. I would do a jalapeno tiramisu Done. porter. I like that. Oof. I feel like it would be really gross because the jalapeno spice. Would oh, it would be disgusting. <laughs> but oh god, you'd sell so much of it. Though. Yeah, yeah. Jalapeno, especially in Texas. Tiramisu porter. You put like jalapeno with anything in Texas. I'm not gonna lie. Just, like <laughs> great. If you drop the jalapeno, I would probably drink the fuck out of some tiramisu, tiramisu porter. porter. I could make. I could make a tiramisu, tiramisu porter. I would probably fuck that up. Yeah. Crisis point two. Yeah, crisis 2.0. I, could do, we, I, could, I could do that if I wanted to. We need to not make it jet Jetty. fuel this yeah. time. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's going to be jet fuel. We're going up to 20%. <laughs> no. We're, we're, we're going gonna to change our license just so that we can make this yeah, fucking beer. Exactly. All right. Jim, what would you bring to market? Oh, uh, shit. I would no, limits. no limits. No limits. Just no the limits. the most ridiculous thing I could and, think and of. And money is not. Not an option. Not a not well, a just, not just, a subject. Just, to just because everyone does it, and it's just like something. I would do like an oaked, like has to be aged. You know, this really sweet beer aged in oak, a whiskey oak, like fennel, <laughs> <laughs> um, lemon pound cake. <laughs> <laughs> oaked fennel lemon. Fennel pen. is so strong. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Put that in your drink hole. <laughs> That's a good one. Jazz, yeah, but ask me age, but ask me age for 14 months. <laughs> Gross. Uh, all right, you ready? Yeah. An 
apple crisp old fashioned amber. That, that doesn't, doesn't sound, sound bad. bad. Oh, I know. That's good. The point if I, of it was you to come up with the most gonna, ridiculous no, flavors. No, you said if I was going to bring it to market, and I have admitted multiple times that I am the dirtiest of capitalists. Yeah. And if I'm going to bring one to market, you're going to make some money. I'm going to make some fucking Six money. Dollar dollar bills, so, y'all. So apple crisp, old fashioned. Yeah. So I want the sweetness of the apple, the smokiness of the bourbon, a little bit of that bitter flavor that's okay. in there, and da 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 da. And I'm picking an amber because I want it to be a solid carrier, but not something that finishes like a beer. Okay. I still want it to finish with all those other flavors. And the amber is heavy enough to speak on its own, but light enough that those other flavors are actually going to highlight. So it's not like, oh, this is an amber beer with a hint of apple. That's like, yeah. holy shit. That is an old fashioned with amp with yeah. apple in it, but I, I can I can oh make that. Oh my god, Jazz, you learned something. I'd li- I do listen. <laughs> like, I would not do an amber. <laughs> what I would you do? do what I would, would you do instead, it on? Of, instead of doing that that as the base, I would do like more of like a, a scotch ale. Okay. I yeah. see I sure I could see that. I would that. do the scotch ale. I would do it a little bit heavier, like around ten percent, and then I would to get the whiskey, see, I would do air I would barrel age it in whiskey. But barrel. it has to I would absolutely want to do the whole like look, we're gonna put all of the conditions yeah. Of the flavor in this. And then we're going to oak char arrow beige it. it barrel yeah. age it. Yeah. Age. Arrow, 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 beige it. Arrow, arrow beige it. Arrow beige it. Yeah. Right. Uh, barrel it's age it. It's a new it. technique. <laughs> uh, so that you actually get that natural bourbon smokiness yeah. that's no. supposed to be yeah. in there. And then you can But do... the reason that I said don't make the beer too dark is that you, you want that highlighted apple... Christmas so you would to do really like, get, and if you go too dark on the beer itself, you're gonna crush that that sharpness. So what you yeah, what you do is you can do like a little bit of apple juice in there to get that apple flavor, and then you like accent it slightly with like a little bit of like tiny bit of cinnamon mm-hmm. and a tiny bit of clove and like a little bit of like orange peel to bring down the pH a little bit. Well, and you've got to bring some Angostura in there, a little bit of bitters, uh-huh. a little bit of bitters, just to. Yeah, yeah just that's a little where the orange is pulling yeah. from. Now, orange is always the additive because what you yeah. want the orange is you want an expressed orange yeah. so that you get it's just it's opening yeah, up your you palate for do, those other. Acidics. I'm like, you can make that. You can make that beer. We're gonna make that. We'll make that beer. How good would that be? That'd be good. Tell me you don't want to try that. I beer. do want to drink that. I would drink that. I would drink that. Right? Yeah, I would drink that. I would 100 percent do. I'm it. just saying. That's good. I'd drink that beer. I'll drink that beer. I'd drink that beer. I'll do it. Can I pet that dog? Can I pet that dog. I want to pet that dog. Can I pet that dog? You saw that? I'm telling you right now, an an apple crisp old fashioned beer. Yeah, that dog hunts. That dog hunts. Trademarked here. You can't do it. Yep, already claimed it. Warhammer. Usage rights. T M circle. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, so yeah. So speaking of just throwing everything at it and making it work. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about this guy. There is a dude I want to talk about today. Uh, there is a dude called Trazen the Infinite. And this is who I want to talk about today. Trazen the Raisin? Trazen of the Raisin. <laughs> Trazen the Infinite. He's a Necron Lord. He is a Necron Overlord. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> super fancy. Yeah. Um, this dude is also known as the Collector. God. Uh, it's so, so weird. Yeah. It's so weird. Uh, You're making us go on a weird He is here. the the keeper of the the it's referred to as the galleries, but there's a there's a word before that, and I can't remember it. But um, hold on, I have notes. I have Ooh. notes. We, we came prepared. Look at this. I I did not come prepared. I'm I have the with wiki you. fandom. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you. Look at everyone doing their job. Uh, I read it like a like a master student though, so I just skimmed the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled out like the the keywords. The I keywords. Needed. Yeah. Yeah. Command find. Pull the word. <laughs> Command find <laughs> keywords. Okay, so Trazen the ultimate or uh, the the infinite, uh, otherwise known as um, the he's also known as the collector, Necron Overlord, and he is the archaeovist of the Solomance Galleries. The the Solomance Solomance Galleries. Uh, okay, and it's it's on the Necron Tomb World of Solomance, so oh, okay. it, that's why it's called the Solomance Galleries. Um. This dude, uh, you described him best before the show. This guy is a Funko Pop collector of the yeah. 40K world. Yeah. Uh, and it's not necessarily that he's collecting Funko Pops from a particular fandom. He's just taking them. He's just, is it a Funko Pop? 
Yes. I need I'll it. Take it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like that's the it. qualifier. And now I need every variant from um, that line. So yeah. there is uh I'm gonna read uh it's it's about I don't know, paragraph and a half. I'm gonna read it real quick. And I think it's a good setup for us to get into just okay, how good. weird this motherfucker is. Let's do it. So uh this is an excerpt. This is a hyper scroll message uh from Trazen the Infinite addressed to Inquisitor Helena Valera. So this is a Necron. Yeah, sending, sending a, a message to an inquisitor of the Imperium of sending Man. Sending an SNM, SMS. Okay. Dear lady, let me express my fulsome appreciation for your most generous gift. It is so very rare to discover another of my own kind that appreciates my work. Therefore, to find understanding amongst a member of another race is nothing short of a revelation. Jesus Christ. I realize that you briefly trod my galleries, but the fact that you spotted in so short a time that my Acabrius war collection was lacking three regiments of Katashan warriors reveals that you truly have a collector's eye for detail. <laughs> and to send five regiments, such generosity will allow me to weed out and replace a few of the most substandard pieces in my collection. Now, <laughs> I'm going to pause right there. Is he, is he, is what he, he means by this... Is he talking shit? What he means by this is this dude in his collection in the recreation of that battle was missing three regiments of humans, Katashan warriors. Yeah. And we don't mean this is a table No, he with he minis has like, on it. He's got people in stasis fields. Yeah. It recreating posed, the posed people in stasis fields. And he's missing three regiments. Wait, 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 wait. Is he talking shit to this Inquisitor right now? Oh, it gets better. <laughs> like, like, so this Inquisitor, after... Because they they break in and tour his his galleries, realizes that three regiments regiments of dudes are missing. Uh -huh. Sends him five, five regiments. Do, okay, does she actually send them, or is yes. she send? Nope, she sends five regiments of dudes. Like like just being like, hey, you guys are gonna go attack snaps them up and goes, no, 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 ships them. Like in their DHL, stasis. like just yeah. Here you go, <laughs> complete your collection. You okay. gotta sign for the package though. Yep. Yeah. Uh, one of them's cracked. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Uh, so, a few of the more substandard pieces in my collection. If I might level a minor criticism, the instructions issued to your gift were manifestly not as clear as you thought, as most of them had to be forcibly restrained. <laughs> Sadly, it seems that the lower orders will always behave like an army of invasion, rather than that, uh, whether that be their purpose or not. However, this is a minor complaint and seems almost churlish under the circumstances. So please allow me to repay your gift with one of my own. Accompanying this message is the Hyperstone Maze, one of a series of tesseract labyrinths constructed at the height of the Charnavok dynasty. It is a trinket, really, only of interest to scholars such as you and I, but I trust you will find it amusing, uh, assuming you have the wit to escape its clutches, of course. So to answer your question, they sent five regiments of Katatian warriors to go attack this dude, yeah. and he just kept them. <laughs> so 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 she she didn't actually like send them. No no no. Like, it wasn't they, a gift. It wasn't but a gift. She like did she deploy was... them, and that's when he was like, "These instructions were manifestly unaware. We had to forcibly restrain them." Yeah, they were trying to fight back. Yeah, I thought you sent them to complete my collection, and instead <laughs> they actually came to attack me. So obviously, there uh, yeah, was a mistake. obviously there was a misunderstanding. Then this was terrible. Uh, so he sends back uh, a, literally a, a fucking inescapable trap <laughs> of like, here you go. <laughs> Best of luck. <laughs> so, uh, so this dude just collects things. Yeah. Uh, it is. So we're gonna get to things that are actually in his collection. But my favorite rumor. Yeah. About is that some of the primarchs that are unaccounted for are in the collection. That he has one. Ooh. Just in stasis. I like that. And it's just like holding on to a primarch, and it's just like. One what? of the kind. There's, there's well, only twenty of them. Like there's the only twenty. I got one of them. Yeah, the missing primarchs. The ones that are yeah. unaccounted for. Yeah, oh, that, that he's just sense. got one. Now we know he has a massive human in uh, power armor. Yes, but it's never, and that's canon. He has a, this massive human in power armor, but they never like say who he is, where it's from, the oh age God, of the power. So it's funny. just a massive human in power armor is in his collection in stasis. Yeah, and he has, and he basically, yeah, he recreates battlefields. Whole thing, whole thing. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So he has this tomb world. Um, so a a tomb world was originally. So the the Necron dynasty or the Necron empires, right, uh, were galaxy stretching, uh, 
it, I mean, the, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of planets. Right, like, right. So, and, but when they did the whole, essentially their, their Faustian deal, I was like, hey, we want to live forever. And they were like, cool, you just walk into this machine, you'll be fine. Yeah, right. So they walk in, they're great. very close to humans. And then they walk into this machine and come out the other side as robots. Yeah. It, like it's a... Yeah, complete so, robot. Uh, so all of these worlds, and then they essentially get shut down. They go dormant, like your computer goes to sleep. Yeah, because they're they're, they're robotic, yeah. hive mind now, take commands the whole nine years. Exactly. Um, but they were called tomb worlds because they they essentially all went to sleep and yeah. And there's a huge uh, amount of um, uh, Egyptian mythos with very very backgrounds. heavily involved yeah. in the Egyptian myth mythos with them. Um, a lot of the names, a lot of the yeah, yeah. the leadership structure, all that yep, kind of stuff. Yep, yep, uh, yep. But they're called tomb worlds, and uh, so when they started waking up, they just kept the name. Yeah. Um, plus, that's where like all of them died because they just show up at these machines and they, they go in and they all died, die but live forever. Like it's a yeah, they it's get a recreated. weird thing. Um, well, yeah, if you like die, your your mind goes into the uh, yeah, know, and then the, they just they stick they you in another in database. and they stick you in another body. They're Cybermen. Um, they're they're Cybermen. Terminators yeah. also would be a good yeah. way to yep. look at them. Yep. Um, but Egyptian Terminators. Borg. So his Borg, his gallery, is an entire planet. It like. Cored out, yeah. It's it's hollowed out, like it's 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 a and it's the whole planet. So if it's like, well, how the fuck does he have display battles? But that's how. That's how. Yeah. The museum is, and it's not a museum. It's a gallery, and it's just his. Like you can't go like go buy a ticket and like is it, like I would go buy a ticket. I, I would too. But yeah, hundred uh, percent. So he's this, but he's this avid collector, like obsessive. <laughs> yeah, that's a little twerk. Yeah. Um. One of my favorite things is that he's described as liberating uh, persons and things that are important <laughs> to galactic I'm liberating them. to I, galactic history. Which a lot of it, it literally says that it's done by like low flying Necron ships. Just go by, and just like <laughs> thwoop, yoink. Yeah, and you're, just, <laughs> my favorite thing about fuck him. There you go. <clears throat> my favorite thing about him, and there's there's some items that like you can read up on because there's some incidents that happened with his collection. But like if something gets broken or there was a fire and some stuff got destroyed. Yeah. He will stop and drop what he's doing and just go find replacements. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, but I'm like, <laughs> but if you have like Katachan warriors and they get like burnt, he's it's like, like ah, God damn it. I gotta okay, go. Okay. I gotta go snatch a hundred more. <laughs> gotta go find a hundred Katachans. You know how hard they are to find right now? <laughs> Fucking horse shit. Cause he's not too interested in like the nitty gritty details. Or like the buttonholes or anything like like the super small details. He yeah. just wants it replaced. Yeah, as fast as he can. As fast as he can, because he he just needs it. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's a got, hoarder. Yeah, he's a hoarder. <laughs> also, yeah, and the the other thing about him is he doesn't really like like want to or interested in like ex expanding the Necron dynasty. <laughs> he's just collecting. He's not interested nope. in. He's not, like, he's not collecting. He's maintaining history of the galaxy. Okay. Yeah, he's but like, but but he's not interested in doing any of that like. You know, for the for like we're working together as Necrons no. to like become supremacy. He's like, oh no 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 no! I gotta go find. I gotta find like I have to find three Catachan colonels. Yep. I have to go find a Tyranid. Uh, yeah. You know, a couple of uh, those. I got this guy coming. Like he's. I gotta find so him. I'm, I'm busy. I'm busy for the next two hundred. And apparently, for, uh, most of his collection he finds <laughs> through like puppet master work. So he's got a bunch of other overlords. And, yeah. and lords and stuff like that, that like, they're like, yo, Trace, you're not going to believe what I the found. found. I like, got this for you. Go yeah. pay me. Yeah, pay me my like, money. And so, oh my God. This reminds me of like, um, what was that road antiques show? Antique road show? Antique road show. <laughs> so other like, Necrons are just bringing found stuff. This. <laughs> it's more American pickers. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, these other dudes are like, yo, I stopped by this thing. They have a Gulf Oil sign that's just <laughs> prime, dude. Like I think it'd look really good yeah. in your collection. It's you should come down and take a look. Tin yeah, or, or, or it's a little bit like Pawn Stars. Like just a bunch of overlords yeah. are bringing yeah. their shit. To Do you him. mind if I bring in my guy? Yeah, I need to figure <laughs> out. And the the infinite is just like ah, best I can do is like five hundred credits. Yeah, that's, Trazen that's definitely it. has a Pawn Star show. Oh, he definitely does. There's a that everyone's pond. watching. Yeah, so I would watch that. <laughs> All right, so one of my favorite things about his obsession <laughs> with his collection is. During one of the Black Crusades, <laughs> Abaddon the Despoiler comes out of the warp 
<laughs> to attack the Imperium of Man, <laughs> and it's a little too close to the gallery. Was it? So Trazen decides he's going to throw help to the Imperium to stop Abaddon. From because right. if the warp powers came into the galaxy, he or wouldn't gallery, be able to... Yeah. No, to the galaxy, uh-huh. it would fuck up his timeline and collection. So he's like, I'm going to have to step in here. Because <laughs> I got this I got this diorama so just he, right. He and be, if you win right now. So literally became like an ally of convenience for the <laughs> Imperium of Man. Because they were like, you're going to fuck my Funko Pops up, bro. Yeah. Like you can't. I got it. And then you would be, these are worthless at this point, And yeah. I can't. So Trazen essentially heard ruinous powers and was looking at his quote unquote statues and was like, Oh, hell no. Nah. Nah, you're like, not you ruining these. You ain't bringing your ruinous <laughs> shit up in here. You know how long I've been fucking with this? <laughs> it, like, but also, he'll pick up people like important people off battlefields. It, just pluck them. Just, just pluck them. Well, yep. he tried to take the, the spear of Vulcan like twice. Three times. He's just like, I'm going to need that spear. So He's like, Rocket that. Raccoon. He's like, I'm going to need that leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need that eye. <laughs> so, uh, I, so in the lore, I guess Vulcan left nine items. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like... Left behind after the War of the Beast. Yeah, he left behind like nine. M31, M32, whatever. He leaves nine items behind that his the salamanders are supposed to find. <laughs> yeah, at least but that's he what he's saying. But he doesn't tell anybody? Like, yeah. he's just like, they'll figure it out. Nobody like, knew nobody. where you were. <laughs> I texted Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> so he leaves nine items. But one of them's the Spear of Vulcan. Yeah. Three separate times this motherfucker has tried to steal that spear from the salamanders. <laughs> and it's just like, Trace it. No. Yeah, he's like, um, I'm going to need that spear. I, how does that work? Did they just pop up and be like, swipe or no swiping? And like yeah. and they said it three times and he's just like, oh, man. man. And like wanders off. The guy there is like actually holding it. It's like, no, it's mine, bro. Yeah. You can't have it. Like, he's come like, on. How much you need for it? <laughs> how much you need? What do you got? <laughs> what, do you, what do you What do you everything's, need? Everything's what do you got a trade? Yeah. What do you want to trade? Right. It is very Rocket Raccoon. It's like, I'm going to get that spear. Yeah, I'm going to get it someday. <laughs> I'm going to get that spear. I'm going to get that out. Bro, <laughs> bro, you may be a space marine. I am an immortal robot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I, who has a weird collection hobby. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> Timelines aren't really a thing. So what are things that are in his collection? So uh, so there is the the massive human in power armor. That is just alluded to. It, it, it's the only way it's referred to is, is the massive human in antique power armor. Okay, great. That's I, I all that's said. Do, do you have part of his Trazen collection? Uh-huh. Trazen's weird collection? Go ahead. Um, hold on. The one, the one that I... All right. This is what he has. <laughs> Holographic events recapturing events of history deemed worthy of preservation. The last High Council of Idari Craft World. Eldari? <laughs> Eldari yeah, Craft Yeah, but it's spelled like I D H A R A E. Idari. Uh, the Eldari Craft Worlds, though. Yeah. So the, the last, last High Council. Uh, the whole council. The whole council. <laughs> the whole How Council. <laughs> An exhibit my... showcasing the massacres on Tragus. Jesus. A warband of orcs attacking an unknown blue-shelled invertebrate Xenos species. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and by the way, we don't mean he's got a diorama of that. <laughs> it's an entire warband of actual orcs. How many orcs are in a warband, Jazz? All of them. <laughs> yeah, like 100, 200. 100, no. 200? A warband? Yeah. No, How dude. Is- you're talking 200,000, 300,000. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> a war band? Like a wog war band? Yeah, a wog. It, it, yeah, yeah. No, it, yeah, it's an outrageous amount of... It, it's all... The, the answer with orcs is all of them. It, like, yes. it's... How many orcs are there? Yes. There's yes. orcs. <laughs> the catacombs of Kalf during the underground war. What? <laughs> he has the catacombs of Kalf? Yes. He just no, took no. catacombs? So, for everyone who doesn't know, Kalf was... Like, catacombs of Kalf was where, like, during the Hair Horse Heresy, they... Basically, a bunch of ultramarines had to go underground to survive a virus bombardment and just live down there for like hundreds of years. It was the only way to survive an exterminatus event yeah. on Calf, and so they just lived underground. They lived underground for like 100 years, But right? it's a historical event. So he just went and took the catacombs. <laughs> Which is a chunk of the planet. It was just like, he just, just like, take he these. just like took it like a slice of it, like yeah. it's a cake. That's how it works. <laughs> Um, an exhibit labeled the death of Lord Solar Macaris, which is one tenth composed of by the Imperial Guardsmen who are 300 years from the wrong time period. What? So that means, so, okay. So 
Lord Solar, but a Lord Solar is a it, like. So you have like battalion, division, regiment, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. A Lord Solar is above them all. Controls like an an army. Mm-hmm. So now, even in modern U.S. military, we have multiple armies. You have like First Army, Third Army. Mm-hmm. That's what a Lord Solar would command. Is okay. is like. So you're talking multiple regiments full there of multiple generals, divisions. Yeah. That's a Lord Solar. Okay. They also ride like robotic horses and shit. Yeah, like yeah, they're yeah, super yeah, dope. Yeah, yeah. Uh the most famous one now, Pony Boy, it's Lord Solar Lenitis? Yes. Le- I, I think it's Lenitis is yeah, the current Linitis, one that in forty yeah. K yeah, it's, it's still there. And he's, he's Lord a, Solar Linitis. He, and he's he, got a mechanical he, horse in, and Yeah, he's in charge of the the forces of the solar segmentum. There you go. That's what it is. So yeah. basically a lower soul is like in Runs charge of the entire or part s- of the galaxy. Well, uh, yeah. uh, a planetary system, a solar system. Yeah. So uh, so he's got, but <laughs> one tenth of it. One tenth it, composed of by Imperial Guardsmen who are 300 years from the wrong Which means time he period. couldn't complete <laughs> enough dudes from Could that time em. period. So he had to like proxy in. <laughs> you got a bunch of like new guys and like, you're gonna wear these clothes you know it bugs the shit out of him too when he walks by and he's just like motherfucking f- f- just couldn't get that 300 it's like when a uh, Horus Heresy went to full scale like the Primaris models versus like the old GW models that's yeah and everybody's how I think going like see these are more accurate like this is just I can't fucking I can't you, get them anymore you know he walks by his collection he's like I'm gonna have to rebuy all of these fucking yeah, like every every, they're all wrong they don't match I gotta have to redo models. all this your pants were red, and now they're blue. They're, blue. they're supposed to be red. <laughs> okay, a, a Catan ch- shard that Trazen has called the source of his power and the crown jewel of his collection. He has a shard of Satan? Satan, yep. A, sh- a Satan shard that Trazen has called we're the source We're not even getting into Satans. Satans are gods. It, like, there's no way to, way to yeah. phrase it. They are, they, are, they are gods. They are birth of the universe energy sources. They are gods. And the... Old ones, the ones that predate the Eldari, the old ones yeah. figured out how to shatter them. Yeah. Couldn't kill them, but broke them. Right. The so he's just got his so a personal good. Satan shot. Yeah. Like, the rest insane. of these get so good. So I'm gonna need y'all to like strap in. A Wraithbone choir of Athlansar? Atlan at Altansar? That's a craft world. So a a so a Wraithbone choir. Okay. A Wraithbone choir when in the Eldari society, when you die, your consciousness doesn't just like disappear. You get added into the Wraithbone, which is the magic, but yeah, yeah, the, the material that they build their craft world ships out of. Uh-huh. Well, your consciousness gets put. In, if you've ever seen Avatar, yeah, yeah, and he he plugs into the tree, yeah. and you can like and you hear all the memories. Yeah, that's a Wraithbone choir. So everybody that dies in the Eldari just becomes part of the choir in the Wraithbone. He has the whole fucking choir. Like, yeah. Of this is so like, like <laughs> Imperial British, where it's just like, no, we're preserving. <laughs> yes, every, yes, yes, we're preserving everybody. Why? And no, it's yes, I know it doesn't belong <laughs> to me, but we're the only people who can properly maintain the integrity of the Wraithbone choir. What did you bring to me today? Wraithbone choir. Bully, sir. Bully. 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 <laughs> okay, he has a. Preserved head of Sebastian Thor. Sebastian Thor. I don't know that one. I don't Who's know Sebastian. That is We're gonna have to look that up. Okay. And Pony boy, Sebastian Thor, please. Ossified husk of an enslaver. Oh. Oh my God. That's good. A giant man wearing baroque power armor. Okay, so that's how it's described. Is baroque. It's a, a giant man wearing baroque power armor. That means that so baroque in this case is going to mean original but handcrafted. Yeah, yeah. Specifically okay. for that person, you don't handcraft power armor for just a space marine. Yeah, so that's now, somebody. Maybe it's a thunder warrior. Maybe, maybe because the thunder warriors were rare. They were the personal fucking army. Mm-hmm. What do you got, buddy? Who's Sebastian Thor? So he's got so Sebastian Thor was one of the leaders during the Great Unification Wars, which is when the human race was all fighting itself. Yeah. So this predates the, even the the emperor coming to power. And I got his head. And I just I got, got his, his head. head. Now, the the giant man in baroque power armor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
arguably could be a Thunder Warrior. Yeah. Because the Thunder Warriors were all the personal army that the... Also, also before, during the Unification Wars, uh, Thunder Warriors were, weren't really there, but also Custodians didn't really get their golden armor until after Unification. Until later. So, so they, they had their own shit. They, the, they Thunder wore, armor, the Thunder Warrior thing, I can kind of see it. Custodian, maybe. Maybe, but the Thunder Warrior thing, because they were all supposed to be disposed of. Yeah, yeah. They were only used for the Unification War, but they were right. crazy unstable, so it turns into like... yeah. If we gotta get rid of these, like right. they predate the, but a giant man in baroque power armor. You think it's a, a primarch? I love the theory that, that it's one of the primarch. missing primarchs. I love that too. Yeah. Uh, mm. Brother Cassiel of the Blood Angels, second into the Death Watch, his face was frozen in a moment of fear. Oh, he has a power. He that is a, metal as shit. <laughs> he has a Blood Angel. So, but a Blood Angel that made it to the Death Watch, who was afraid. And then snatched him when his face would. So a blood angel, who is one of the the yeah. angels of death, uh-huh. and they shall know no fear. Frozen in a moment of fear, what the fuck did you do to this? And he's a Death Watch member. Yeah. It, like, yeah. What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? Uh, Karnak World Spirit Shrine. Wow. Okay. Aka Brius War Katachan Regiments. Okay. Well, that's how he. I was uh, missing three. I was missing three. Yeah. You gave me five. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. This is a, <laughs> a temporal device containing the Tyranid invasion of Veros, which Trazen sparked himself sparked disposed of after several full scale battle results from Tyranid breakouts. The so, Tyranids get breaking out of his so temporal he disposed device. It. He's, so like, just, no. he's like, no, yeah, no, 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 it's not worth it. No, it's just it. pesky. I keep getting. <laughs> that's how you get ants. That's, that's how you get that's, ants. That's how you get ants. <laughs> that's how you get ants. That's how you get ants. Um, Horus Heresy Era Ultramarines. <laughs> <laughs> Just I have Ultramarines. I got like forty. Wait, it's fine. Like, it's, it's like a company. Uh, Vostroyan Firstborn Regiments. Okay. Firstborn Vostroyans. Yeah. Well, the Vostroyans are called the regiments. Firstborn. That's what the regiments called. Regiments of them. Yeah, the Firstborn. So the Vestroyan Firstborn is a type of regiment. That's like what they're called. Because they come from in a, um, the Vestroyan pull their, oh, they're their, their old regiments. Old school guard. Yeah, yeah they're like, old school. But, is... they, but they pull their regiments. They're still around. But they, they pull yeah, their yeah. regiments from like the Firstborn of the royal class. Yeah, these are, yeah. these are I fight because... Mommy told me to. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy earned our planet by fighting for the Emperor. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and now I still fight. Uh, <laughs> Mommy. Lost... Tanith regiments. He has Tanith. Yeah. <laughs> regiments. The of lost Tanith regiments. <laughs> so all those regiments they didn't account for. He's got him a fishbowl. Yoink. <laughs> uh, salamanders thought lost during the Cloven disaster. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy. A custodies. He just has a custodies. A custodies. There's only like four of those guys. Yeah. A custodies. Uh, Inquisitor Greyfax and her retinue, which escaped. Yeah. They oh, escaped. they got out? They yeah. got out. Yeah. Uh, the Bell of St. Gersthal. Oh, okay. So this one, apparently, he's played practical jokes with. So go look that up. It's pretty hilarious. So it only rings when there's like a threat to certain planets. Uh-huh. But once it rings, it rings so strongly it's destructive. Okay. So it happened to him. So the Black Crusade happened, and it attacked a planet that's like linked to that bell, uh-huh. and it started ringing. It started cracking shit in the gallery. So he apparently ships it to another overlord at a stasis field. <laughs> <laughs> it literally says disposed of after causing irreparable damage to the, his forces and collection. Yeah. So when the black when the Black Crusade happened, that bell starts ringing, and he was like, "Oh fuck this thing!" And he was like, "Nope." And he was like. I know who I could send this to. <laughs> and apparently shipped it off to somebody else so that it would keep every time it would just ring and just destroy shit, shit while it was going on. House. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's great. Uh, Lord General Ursakar E. Creed. Yeah, he took Creed. Yeah, he's got Lord General Creed. He's got Lord General Creed. He is the commander of the Cadian war- the world of Cadia. Oh. And he swooped him. Right before the world <laughs> broke. Yeah, before he got shattered. And actually, Creed went with him willingly. The fuck, I went too. Well, no, because apparently every once in a while he'll show up and just be like, would you like to be immortalized? We will maintain your your story mm-hmm. forever. And, it's like, yeah, and Creed looked at it as being like, I got a chance to get out. Nothing's forever. 
Well, I believe I believe Creed actually saw it as the ability for Cadia's memory to live on forever yeah, yeah. if he went. And so it was more of a the yeah. planet may break, but Cadia will stand. If I'm around. if I stand forever. And yeah. so But then also his daughter is now the general uh, of uh Cadia. Ursula. Ursula. Yeah. But for some reason, they don't know how, he has her dad's helmet that he was wearing. She has his, his helmet. helmet. Well, you know, he might have thrown it down. No, like the 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 thing is like maybe he maybe Trace just dropped it off and Trace was like and dropped it off. Yo yo, like, yo 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 yo. You, could I, we do this in two chapters? I like, could I you got fucking, you, I got I'm gonna need you to wear this hat because what we're gonna do is is, is gonna be daddy. Yeah, and, and then, then this, I'm gonna throw Ursula and then in, then and then we got them right next to each other, and, and they then have the same hat, and then and the I'm gonna hat. put a hat in the middle. It's gonna be this fucking. It's gonna be a beautiful display, but I need a closing act. So Ursula, I need you to crank out a copy. So I can get three stages. It's gonna be it's way better as a trilogy. Yeah, I got it. She's, she's, she's not a good looking. Trilogies lady. are better. <laughs> she's not a good looking lady. Don't worry. I don't think she's coming again. He has a twelve foot tall crook, crook, Crote? power Crote? armor Is more it? advanced than a Stardis power armor. K R O R K. Croak. Yeah. Croak. Uh, it's but one of the more advanced than a Stardis power armor. See, Great. that's why all of a sudden you just read the stuff and you're like, it's a lot of history. 12 feet tall. 12 feet. It's good. It's good power armor. Well, I'm just go look at how tall your average Primark is. 12 feet tall. That's true. A uh, damaged but still functioning webway portal. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why would you keep that around? It's still functioning. It's not damaged. Yeah, but the webways don't work. You open wanna... one and it's just like, oh Christ, that's hell. No, yeah. right? Like, I want to know where he got that from. Just I want to like, know. Yeah, I, was just, I need this. I want this. I want he this. took whole catacombs out of a planet. Do you think it's hard for him to take a door? <laughs> With an no, apple pie slicer. I want to know which door it was from. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Yeah. A uh, troop of harlequins. Great. Okay. That. You know what? That tracks. That tracks. That, 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 that's that's a minor. That's a minor clue. <laughs> so if you don't know what harlequins are, they're uh. Clowns and jesters. Yeah. Closer to jesters, but like the creepy kind, like yeah. long face, yeah, the whole not, fucking not the guy. Ones. Like not think fun. like Italian clowns. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. And they yeah. ride like space motorcycles and they dance around and that's and how they fight. fight. Like it's weird. Like the Quasimodo scene. They're terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely terrifying. Yeah. They would do capoeira. <laughs> Their old models were way better than the new ones. The old model, those bikes they had that had that huge fucking grinning face yeah. on the front of the yeah. challenge. That was yeah. yeah I have dope. one of those. Original metal one. Nice. It's dope. Look at you. Mm-hmm. Look at you over here, the infinite. I like your trays and light. <laughs> all right, we got two more things in his collection. Okay. All right. Are you all ready? Yeah. A massive stock of uncorrupted Emperor's Children gene seed, which was traded to Fabius Bile. Okay, what did he trade it for? It uh, doesn't say. He gave it to Just Fabius Bile. Just says in parentheses, Bile. traded to Fabius Bile. I like how Fabius Bile is doing trade deals with uh With Trazen. <laughs> well, see, now I need infinite. to read that book, though, about when Fabius Bile doesn't get invited to the... The party, so Fabius just like kind of shows up and oh, it like, hasn't come out yet. And the it, one with the one with um Fabius Bile and um and uh, uh Carl, uh, yeah, Carl, yeah, yeah, it hasn't come out yet. I need to read that, yeah, it hasn't come out yet. Maybe we know what happens. Uh, uh-huh. Be like, hey, I've got original EC gene seed. Who wants it? Want me to juice it? Uh, juice it? Let me, <laughs> let me put this baby batter in there. Yeah, are right, you ready? Let's make. make some, let's make some ECs. Mm-hmm. Last but not least, he is a perfect clone of the Primark Fulgrim. Oh, he's got f- uh, oh, perfect clone. clone. He's he's got clone grim. Yep, he's got clone grim, which is probably where he he probably got it from Fabius Bile. Probably that's probably what he traded that for. Might have been what he traded it, it probably, for. So yeah, that's probably. those are everything that is in his collection as of now. As we know, it, it continually t- grows. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, that <laughs> is funny. Infinite. It's a, and by the way, we scratched the surface. <laughs> Trays in the infinite he has is. A book. It is a book. Uh, uh, there's a up. ton of lore out there. Yeah. Like it's Trazen it is, versus the what is it? The infinite versus the something. But uh, nice. there's a ton of stuff on Trazen out there. He's absolutely hilarious. Really doesn't get into war. Like no. he really just wants so to silly. collect shit. So uh, if so, you were yeah. nerd like the rest of us, that's all about completionists. And let's see if we can put it together. Yeah. You two might want to look into Trazen because it's a uh, fucking hilarious. It's oh, fucking. He seems like a hilarious, like a war gamer to me. He's just like. Oh, I yeah. got this model and I got this one. Oh, that one looks pretty. Yeah. yeah. But they made the special edition one. That but, I but I got the special edition. I got yeah. the Black Library special edition one. Yeah. 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 He so spends he spends extra. I'm never for the gonna pre-release. build it. It's just gonna sit in plastic. Yeah. Why do I feel like you're attacking me right now? 
I'm not attacking anybody. I'm, I'm attacking you. I have like 15 Black Library celebration models that are still in the box, <laughs> still in cello. They're just I lined know. up on a shelf. It, like, I know. I know. You're I just like to look at them. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you know they, they didn't even know if they if you put those sprues together, if they even work or not. They're just like, no one's opening these. It's fucking fine. <laughs> <laughs> There's no plastic There's in no there. There's no plastic in it's there. A it's just a box. Yeah. <laughs> I just like that Trazen proxy in some... <laughs> Imperial Guard. I don't have all the same ones. You don't mind if I run these, though, do you? Yeah, <laughs> no Trazen. This is a no print, no proxy gallery. Yeah, I mean, that's no. what we should call our customers that want to do. Calm it down, Trazen. Yeah. Calm it down, Trazen. Oh, wow. shit. Don't be a Trazen. If you had a, if you had a, gal, if you had a, a collection like that, I'm like, that's a, that's a pretty righteous thing to have. Yep. <laughs> yep. And do you know who else was right? <sighs> who was a good boy? He's a Who's good a boy. good boy? Russ was a right. Russ was a good right. boy. Russ was a good Such boy. Such a boy. All right, guys. Go out there. Games, drinks, and hijinks. Start that collection. Yep. And uh, let us know what uh, you think Trazen needs to collect next. That's going to be the question I'm going to ask. Yep. What else does he need to go collect on the timeline? What's most important? Oh, right now? <sighs> yeah. I want to know. I want the audience to tell us what Trazen needs to go <laughs> grab. That would be really just funny. Yeah. Because all of a sudden he just takes uh, um, Lionel high Johnson. F- high Fleet Leviathan. <laughs> <Lionel laughs> snaps it up. Just snaps up Lionel Ooh. Johnson. Like, we did have a Primark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did have a brand new Primark. He's gone. High, awesome. High yeah. Fleet Leviathan. Then. Yeah, but I also like how they use Trazen as just like an ability to, uh, um, like just it's not Dios, gone. It's yeah, just Dios, over there. Just over there. Dios, uh, Machina. Just yeah. like he can just like oh they got it they escaped from Trazen he's well, back. Yeah, because if they ever need it back he can just <laughs> oh no he, no yeah, Trazen took it. There was a and power then, outage. Yeah, and he just bloop. Yeah, bloop. it was a brownout. Yeah, it was a brownout, <laughs> which happens on his world all the time. All the time. It's constantly just maintaining. All right, games, drinks, and hijinks. Go do your thing. Drink beer, play games. Uh, Hit them with them, Jim. Bye. That's all I got for you today. (laughs) 